Hey guys, I'm Lee from Lee Likes Music, the place to make music more meaningful. And in today's video, we're going to talk about Sleigh Bell's newest album, which is called Kid Khrushchev. So that's coming up. So Sleigh Bells, for you guys who haven't heard about them before, they're basically a noise pop duo. They blend together all sorts of different genres. There's rock, there's pop, there's elements of electronics here. They became famous back in 2010. They gained some critical acclaim for their album, which is called Treats. They have this very noisy, authentic, pedal to the metal way of mixing very gnarly guitars together with Alexis Krauss vocals, um, kind of sweet, sugar sweet on top of these very heavy electronic uh, elements and the guitars. It's very fresh to listen to this, uh, I feel, although there's a lot of mixed opinions about their early albums. Ever since they were formed back in 2008 in New York, they have released five albums, if we include this newest one that we're going to talk about today. The first song is called Blue Trash Mattress Fire. It's a synth-driven conglomeration of electronic elements, guitars, you also have these alternating vocals kind of bouncing in and out. The intro of the song is very lengthy. It lasts for one and a half minutes. And after the one and a half minute mark, it suddenly drops into the verse and you hear this gnarly bass and guitar slightly out of the mix, very loud and bombastic, which is very typical. Um, it reminds me of their sound that they had on their first album. And, and that is sort of the signature sound of Sleigh Bells at this point. The problem that I have with this song and also many of the other songs on this album is that it lacks a proper hook. That is what made that first album, many of the songs on Treats, so amazingly catchy. It had this raw edge, but at the same time that edge was glued together with a conformed catchy hook and I don't find that on the song. It's very dim and um, yeah, boring. The second song is called Favorite Transgressions. It sounds like Derek Miller, the guitarist, was very inspired by some typical 70s guitar riff here because it sounds very old fashioned, very classic rock-esque, which is kind of cool. Now again, I start to see problems when I when I listen to the song because there are so many instrumental breaks here and they all just slaughter the flow that was initially established early on in the song. There are so many of these instrumental breaks that it almost sounds like sleigh bells don't know what they're doing. It's not like they're trying to experiment with the form of the song. It just sounds like they're aimless. Moving on to number three, Rainmaker. This is one of the leading songs on the album. I actually believe it's one of their singles. And there's a good reason why this song is a single is because it's much more of a banger compared to all of the other tracks on this album. The classic hip hop sample that is in here and the tickling guitar riff that is sort of lingering or reverberating into the background. There's something about it that's very catchy. You you get teased by it sort of. Alexis, the vocalist, deliver these phrases that are snowflake thin, but then again, they transform into something a lot more uh, bombastic and, and bigger and louder. And I think that is exactly what's so good about this song. That is what makes this song stand out. It has sort of an hook, but the bottom line, at the bottom line, it has these very strong dynamics. And uh, yeah, <laughs> I fell for it. It wasn't an instant banger for me. It was something I had to listen to more and more, but I started to like it. It was a, um, it was a, grower basically. It also had a proper structure and a flow and uh, it might help. The fourth song is called Panic Drills. This is actually one of the softer songs on the album but it leads also into some heavier parts. Alexis has this very burdened voice. It sounds like she's sharing something in the lyrics that is very troublesome, that is painful and you also have these um, uh, piercing guitars here as well. So there is sort of a dynamic play here and there in the song, but I don't feel like there's any hook. I don't, I can't latch onto 
any of the melodies here and uh, actually sing it in my head and that's a problem for me. Track number five is called Show Me The Door. Here you can hear a mash of synths, there's bass and drums and modulated vocals. There is a very nice structure here in the song, I have to admit that, but the intro and the outro of the song they're just so lengthy. It's insane. It's the exact same thing that that happened on the first song on this album. They're so lengthy. It's almost like they didn't have enough material and they just wanted to end the creative process of this song very fast. So they just watered it out with uh, with a lengthy intro and outro. Were they out of ideas or something? I don't know. The sixth track, Florida Thunderstorm, starts with an acoustic guitar. You hear these uh, these samples of birds kind of singing in the, in the background. And uh, it sounds like a typical summer song, to be honest. The only thing that changes, the thing that interrupt this whole imagery is uh, are the dissonant key notes, the dissonant synth notes that suddenly pop in and break the atmosphere. This is a very experimental track, especially in terms of the structure, because it's not leading anywhere. And um, I don't know, again, it feels like they are trying to do something here, but it's not clear, it's not very direct, it's not smooth, and it just comes off a bit immature. The last and the seventh track is called And Saints. This is definitely one of the more calmer tracks on the album. You hear very early on these very deep 808 plucks that are colliding with uh, Alexis reverberating vocals. The same synth melody is played throughout the whole song with some minor alterations in the vocals. There's more backing vocals added on later on, but Basically, the whole song is very samey and um, it becomes very fleeting because of that. So it, it feels very short. It starts and it's over. I know I haven't touched that much on the lyricism, but for the most part, it sounds like Krauss is touching on something that is very deep, that is very dark. There's nostalgia, there's anger, regret, low self-confidence. There's even death that is mentioned in these songs. So it's a very dark place that she is touching on in the lyricism. It's also written in a very foggy, non-linear fashion, so it's it's very hard to know exactly what she's talking about, but you know that it's coming from a place of, you know, depression, sadness, and such. What really just made me want to skip many of the songs on this album is just the the lack of great structures here. Many of the songs are very loose-ended. There are weird structures here. It lacks, many of the songs lack a good hook, which is why I came to love some of um, Sleigh Bell's songs in the first place. They had this amazing hook. I think it's very sad to see that Sleigh Bells didn't carry out something that was sonically mature, because it seems like Alexis Krauss is touching on something that is very that is very dark, that is very, like, buried deep inside her. Um, that might be a very superstitious thing of me to say, very pretentious, I don't know. But that is at least what I feel, that is my intuition telling me what this album is all about. It's about something that is that is quite meaningful, but it doesn't have that sonic vehicle to drive it forward so that it becomes more meaningful, so that it transfers better into the ear of the listener. I'm gonna give this album, Kid Khrushchev, a four out of 10. Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you like to share, explore, and learn more about rock music, then I highly suggest you click the red subscribe button below. Also make sure you hit that bell icon beside the subscribe button because in that way, you'll always get notified when I upload new videos to this beautiful place right here. And again, thank you for watching. Hope to see you later. Bye.